Okay, very, very happy to uh, see you all here. Uh, this is the second day of the MIFA campus and the seventh edition of the MIFA campus. And uh, uh, I would like to remind that the first edition that we had of the MIFA campus, we had uh, Guillermo del Toro as the godfather, the first godfather of the MIFA campus. So it's a, a, great, uh, a great news to see that he's, uh, he's back here today uh, with the, uh, an incredible team to, uh, to talk about this uh, uh, retrospective of uh, Mexican animation. So um, I'm uh, very happy to uh, present the whole team that will be uh, presenting this, uh, this session. So let's welcome uh, on this, uh, no, we have first a video, I think. Yeah, let's, let's see a video and uh, I will introduce to everyone after. I hate being dead.
Let's welcome warmly uh, all our guests here. Sofia Carillo, please. Woo! René Castillo. Leon Fernandez. Rita Abadrizzo. Angelica Lares. Bonjour. Comment ça va, ça va bien Ah, ça fait de mieux. Of this space and of all of this movement have been Guillermo and Rigo Mona. So that's yeah. what I wanted to start the conversation. So just tell us a little bit about Rigo, the beginnings, how it started. Well, when, when I started doing Super 8 animation and it was horrible, and, uh, but I liked it and I started, uh, you know, I started when I was a kid and I started, uh, I bought a, a Canon 1014 XL camera which allowed one frame to be exposed at a time. And I felt I was like uh, Ray Harryhausen, and, and uh, I was teaching animation in high school uh, to get credit for uh, art, stu uh, art studios, you know, our studies. And Rigo, this guy, was uh, in my class. I was teaching him animation, and he was much, 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 much better than anybody else, including me. So I said, why don't you uh, come and teach with me, and then why don't we create a company together? Uh, we do makeup effects, we do optical effects, we do animation, and the great thing about it is we were not good, but we were the only guys doing it. <laughs> so, you know, we, we were like uh, the tallest dwarf in the circus. You know, we were super happy with that. Guadalajara is very strange. You know, it's a city that is, at the same time, very creative and very conservative. So we never really did anything for the city. Nobody hired us. Uh, we did everything for Mexico City. We had to go and pitch. We did, uh, the only thing we did was for the uh, International Book Fair in Guadalajara. That's the only client we got. And the first um, commercial we did Uh, it was a lump of clay that transformed into Dracula, a cowboy, a robot, blah, blah, blah. And then it, it finally turned into a book. And we, I started, Rigo and I started animating together. And then after one transformation or two, I said, you, you, you animate, I direct. <laughs> I'm going to walk over there. And he continued animating. We, uh, by that time, I had... Uh, been doing makeup effects for a few years. So I took all the money I had from makeup effects and I bought two Mitchell cameras, Mitchell NC. And we put a, an electric rig that could stabilize the, the electricity. And uh, then we did, you know, commercials here and there, most of them horrible. And, uh, but people started to get familiar with the equipment. And I think uh, Rita, Juan Jose, You know, Rene, you know, they started approaching Rigo uh, to, could we loan them the equipment? And Rigo started discussing, very collegiate, Rigo started talking about animation, and we did the armatures ourselves, we did the puppet ourselves in clay, and I was supposed to start a feature uh, called Omnivore before Kronos, because I was going to marry And my father-in-law said, I hear that people in movies are very indecent. And I said, sir, I'm not indecent. I, I am a good man. I, and I will make all my puppets in clay. There, there's no risk of cocaine use. There's no risk of... <laughs> so we built a hundred and something uh, puppets between my father, my then fiancé, and myself, Rigo, uh, a couple of friends. We built sets, the puppets. And we started shooting 
And the first day of shoot, we went to see a movie, and the workshop was robbed. They broke in, they destroyed everything, and they took a poop. They took a giant poop in the room and peed all over the, and I said, that's, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to live action for a while. <laughs> but the equipment started to be used. Who was the first one that used it? You, right? Yeah, yeah so Rene started, and uh, immediately, all these guys are phenomenal animators. I think that uh, it was very easy to see that, that everything that was built was the basis for that, but the, the real birth of animation is the people that create beautiful things. And Rene started, uh, you know, him and a guy called Tonio Rutia did a since of 10, right? That was the first. So why don't you talk about it? Yeah. Well, I was... Uh, amazed by this technique, stop motion. I was completely in love with this, and I really wanted to push forward to learn. And I was looking for Rigo to teach me. And um, when I finally show my first uh, animation work, he told me it's horrible. <laughs> you are very bad. <laughs> and I said yes, yes. I'm learning. And through the years, he become a really, really great friend of mine of us, of all of us, and he taught me a lot. He and was quite a character. A character. Rigo was quite a character, very offensive little guy. Very, 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 <laughs> but, but lovely guy. He, he would not survive. have survived no. this. No, no, absolutely no, no. absolutely lovely. Yeah. And, and then I met uh, Antonio Rutia, and we wrote uh, a story for a short film, and he asked me, how long is it going to take? And I told him, ah, oh, three months. <laughs> of course, it took us one year and a half, uh, four minutes. Uh, and it was amazing because we, we showed it for the first time at the at Guadalajara Film Festival, and it won like four prizes, all of them. And three months later, we were at Cannes, at Cannes Festival, competing for Pan Dior. It was like, yeah. it was my first festival outside, and I, you know, during years, in the dark, just moving uh, clay, it was like, this is amazing. Yeah. I mean, and and also, uh, we have Rita, that she was part of all this movement in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, Sophie, uh, I mean, all of them, but I think that Rita, you uh, interacted. You were, you were the second one, you, you guys, uh, right? And, uh, with uh, El Octavo Día. Sí. Yeah. <clears throat> este cortometraje, estábamos con Daniel Varela, que también fue el profesor en, en el Instituto de Ciencias ¿no? tuyo, yeah. donde estudió un poco tu este, acercamiento al cine, ¿no? Sí. <coughs> no sé, eh, si me voy después. No, continúa, continúa, uh, I will help you. ¿Do we translate in English? Or in I, I translate in English. So, uh, ¿con quién estabas? No, she started, Daniel Varela was the guy that grandfathered all of, the, of these things because he was a professor of audiovisual in the, in the high school we were at. And he's the one that said, why don't you teach animation if you're doing animation? And he, it was, uh, and then you guys met him, right? Lo conociste ahí. Okay. Sí, conocí a Rigo, este, por una cuestión no necesariamente de la animación, pero nos conocimos y, y es, era un entusiasta, era siempre de buen humor, un humor muy ácido, muy negro, que me encantaba. Este, y nos contaba muchas anécdotas de, de, de ustedes, de una persecución en que traían unos líquidos, se traían para, para, para este, eh, cronos, traían yeah. un material y que… Explosivo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so she met Rigo, and Rigo, he was a very funny character, really, really funny character, and he told her stories about our times doing makeup effects. I mean, Rigo and I, just so you know, like we operated with no money for a while when we were doing Kronos and, or a, a commercial. We, we discovered that the cheapest food we could have was dog food. So we started buying, you know, those bones that they give to dogs to chew? We said, well, they have a lot of calcium, they have a lot of vitamins, <laughs> and every week we would buy one liter of milk and one box of dog food, and that was our, our meal for the whole week. <laughs> Rigo said, pass me a bone. <laughs> and all the money that we saved on food, we put on uh, buying a new set of lights or a new lens and all that. And, and sometimes we, 
we, we started using explosive mixtures. We were very careless. We were doing, you know what a cloud tank is? Where you inject the ink and it creates clouds like Raiders of the Lost Ark? We started doing it with alcohol and gasoline and we started injecting inks and we had the lights hanging over it and they could have exploded. <laughs> and we had anecdotes like that sí. all, all over the place. Sí, nos, nos contaba muchas anécdotas y este, empezamos a hacer el corto y él nos dijo, yo los enseño a inyectar el, el este, látex espum, espumado uh -huh. que tenía un montón de azufre, sí. es súper tóxico. Eh. <laughs> Y, y recuerdo que me dijo, yo lo voy a hornear aquí en la casa, lo vamos a inyectar. Me acuerdo que me paré en el molde y este, yo lo inyecto ahí haciendo así las fuerzas. Lo metimos al horno y empezó a… Oler. Oler. Me empezaron a crecer los lacrimales y me empecé a asfixiar. Y le digo, ven en, dos, en unas seis horas este, por el molde, si no te vas a morir aquí. Y él se quedó viendo la televisión. Yeah. No, we, we used to… I mean, uh... He taught them how to inject uh, foam latex. We, we, uh, uh, what you can uh, Ammonia. Yeah, the, the thing is, latex, when it's curing, is expelling ammonia. And it keeps expelling ammonia even when it's already cured. You know, that's why it disintegrates. And Rigo and I would, I, I still, very, I'm very good at mold making, uh, sculpting. We would sculpt, mold make, paint. I still paint models. Uh, you know, we, we were, we did everything. But, the only thing we didn't have was ventilation. You know, we, we were, eventually we got ventilation, but uh, so they started doing the mold and she started smelling all the ammonia and uh, she had to leave for six hours while the latex was curing. And he was sitting in his, in his living room, right? Yeah, no, we, one day, the longest day we had was for a movie. We had 72 hours not sleeping, not eating, not stopping. And it was waiting for the latex to cure and we pulled it out of the oven and it had collapsed and we started laughing and we fell down on the floor <laughs> and slept for 48 hours on the floor. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was I mean, but it gives you discipline and their, their short is called The Eighth Day uh, and it's an amazing short. I think it was the first time we met. Sí, de Daniel Varela hizo a bien mostrarle unas pruebas de animación en VHS, ¿te acuerdas? Yeah, yeah. Y entonces este, Guillermo me llama a mi casa y me dice, a mi esposa y a mí nos encantó tu proyecto, mm -hmm. queremos apoyarte. Yeah. Me so so we, we, we met and they showed me some test on VHS and uh, I watched it and I called her and I said, I, I saw the short with my wife, we want to support you and I think it was the first time I presented a short. Because yes. I had done Kronos and you know the... The philosophy that came from Daniel Varela and Jaime Humberto Hermosillo, who started all the movement in Guadalajara, it was, if you help each other, it's better than if you try to go solo. Like, I think that when you give, you receive. And so the politic is, every time I produce somebody, a first-time filmmaker, I say, you have to produce somebody that is a first-time filmmaker. That's your duty. Nobody does, by the way. <laughs> but it's, but it, it was the first time. Y, y bueno, para cerrar, porque tenemos tiempo corto, este, me dio un dato para, me hice un dato para ir por un equipo a Churubusco, yeah. y se busca a Rolo y vamos y con, con el equipo. Yeah. Y me traje este, un tripié, un magazine, una, un intervarómetro uh -huh. y usamos la cámara de 35 milímetros que, que Guillermo había donado yeah. a la Universidad de Guadalajara. Sí. The, uh, when we met, uh, what happened is, I produced, uh, I also produced, and I was UPM, assistant director, storyboard artist, anything. And I knew everybody in the industry in Mexico City and everybody, I owed them favors or they owed me favors. So I said to Rita, go and talk to Rolo, who was a, a guy that was in Churubusco, and I said, and get this equipment and bring it in. Uh, for example, we, when we did Doña Erlinda and her son, it was um, a movie that I, I UPM produced for $5,000. And when they gave me the money, I said to the producer, what if I give you change? <laughs> and he said, if you give change, you keep half. So I unloaded and unloaded the equipment, drove the truck, 
to Mexico City, unloaded the equipment, and I get $500. So and this guy, Rolo, had the equipment, so she went and got all the equipment, came back, and uh, you know the, the, the camera that you used was the same camera that Gabriel Figueroa had used to shoot one of the classic movies, the La Perla. It was the same body of the camera, and it had passed from one hand to another. And the, they shot the short, and I presented it, and it's a fantastic short. Uh, thank you. This is what year? It's, uh, yeah, 2000, yeah. Yeah, and so that's how I, it kind of got started. The, the ball started rolling, and yeah. then uh, Sophie Carrillo, Luis Telles, Carla, Leon, they started like forming this group where they helped each other with their short films and they started working together. And I think that's where the idea of a space like uh, Taller del Chicho was born, right? I mean, you, See, that's the yeah. idea you had. What happened, I mean, these guys to me are some of the best animators in the world and Guadalajara School of Animation uh, is one of the aesthetically most coherent uh, <laughs> sort of approaches to aesthetics because they work on each other's Yes. Short sure, Leon works for everyone. <laughs> he directs, he molds, he creates. And then what happens is uh, every time I get something, I want to create something for other people. Like if I get X, I then do a scholarship. If I get Y, I get, an, and it's good because it created, we created the Guadalajara Film Festival. There was no film festival for Mexican film in the entire country. And we said, a group of people, we said, there's no way to see Mexican film in Mexico. So we created the first uh, festival of Mexican film in, in the country. There was no school for cinema in Guadalajara. So we created a cinema school. Both of them are going now on to 40 years. The festival is still going, the school is still there with another name, and what we would do is we would teach in the morning and be students in the afternoon. And when the first five festivals, I was a driver, a ticket seller, a film uh, auteur, we were everything. And I think the, when I won The Shape of Water and I came back with the Oscars, that's when I said, you know, this is the time to ask to create something for this animation movement because there was no, there's a lot of, you have to start from scratch every time. You have to get equipment, you have to rent it. And it all comes from Mexico City. So I, I said, why don't we create a, a workshop for all, for, that is run by the filmmakers, that is not run by the government, that is not run by an institution, and uh, give them a great workshop and at the same time, the possibility was I can then uh, use Pinocchio to give a section of the movie to this workshop and uh, send Leon <laughs> to the UK. To, he, Leon is a genius. Yeah. He's a genius. <laughs> I mean, this guy. But the, to me, the tragedy of Mexico is that it's a country full of geniuses that have no opportunities. And it, it, it is no good to have the artistic capacity if there are no roads to use it. So we thought, well, we'll he will be like Superman. We'll put him in a rocket and send him to Earth <laughs> <laughs> before Krypton explodes. <laughs> and he will learn to do, uh, we thought he could do, go to McKinnon and Saunders and learn to do armatures. And the reality is that McKinnon and Saunders says it. He taught them how to do things the Mexican way. <laughs> a piece of rubber, a little spit, and you do something fantastic. But we did the same thing. We created that. And at the same time, we were creating the scholarships for animation um, that are, are still going. We have about 10 people that have been financed by uh, uh, Cinepolis and myself to study in France, in Gobelin. Every year, uh, two, three, one student goes to, and we pay for tickets, food, uh, uh, materials, the school, everything. And they come back and, and create something beautiful. Leon, we should talk about his experience. Yes. 
Go ahead, Leon. What, how was your experience going to McKinnon and starting all of And this? how was the food? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't talk about the British food. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Uh, when I got to McKinnon, I was very nervous because uh, I felt like, yeah, maybe they will think I am here to steal their, their secrets, right? And uh, no, the, the reality is that uh, people there are really warm. Uh, the, um, Ian McKinnon and Peter Saunders opened the studio for me. And the uh, British are very warm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you see, if you see Ted Lasso, you know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they deserve to be Mexicans. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they taught me everything they could. And uh, I learned about new processes. And uh, they were way uh, more disciplined than we Mexicans because we are used to work with uh, little resources and uh, in a hole in the ground. And uh, when, uh, when I got there, I found out about uh, new materials. And uh, yeah, like I said, with, with uh, lot of uh, discipline there. So uh, yeah, I was there for a year. Uh, I was, uh, uh, Guillermo entrusted me with the making of the dead rabbits, which uh, yeah, it was a huge, huge cha challenge. And uh, yeah, I was always tutored by, by these people that I think that is the best uh, puppet making studio in the galaxy. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, I finished there. Uh, uh, I was I was there for a year and uh, came back to Guadalajara to start with Pinocchio. So, and and yeah. that's where I would also like Sofia to tell us a little bit about the process of making the the, uh, the puppets and the the cloaks for them. But because I, I think it was. But she's also a director, yes, a writer, an animator, a, a, a fantastic. Now she's gonna do her first feature, uh, full, uh, and uh, but. But she is, uh, she's like the mother of the kindergarten of uh, puppets, so why don't you talk about it? Uh, well, yeah. Um, uh, yes, when I was at the, at the high school, I think, I, I learned about uh, the uh, making <coughs> little clothes. So I really didn't, um, I never dreamed that that period of time that I was just, you know, doing something really strange, helped me to get into uh, this um, great world of custom in Pinocchio. And uh, it was just like a, an amazing, uh, I don't know, like an amazing adventure. Uh, the customs are uh, kind of a puppet uh, above the other puppets, so it was like crazy and, and I don't know, like, a, I remember we were just de dealing with some things really like strange, like we had to study how could we just, you know, like, uh, you know, these, uh, the rabbits are, um, you know, carrying the, the, Coffin. the coffins. Yes, yeah, so we have to, to understand how can we just uh, not have these arrugas, how these wrinkles. Like? Yes, so we spend a lot, of, a lot of time just realizing how can we just resolve and then I got, um, I don't know, I feel like I have uh, the opportunity to get into these uh, custom uh, diaries from Mackinnon and Saunders. Yes. And then I read the diaries from Portland. Mm -hmm. So we realized, um, I mean, that was like teamwork. So I, I really felt like I was also like Leon in a, in a kind of residency of custom making. <laughs> and then we received uh, Emilia Hintler and she was there with us, and I don't know. I, I we have uh, somehow uh, Portland in our home also. Yeah. Yes, it was a collaborative uh, triumph for me. So we we needed to finish that because Rene had to take those puppets and begin to to animate, and and we did it. <laughs> and uh, Rene, Rene did the longest shot in the movie. You know, he did uh, the dancing cricket at the end, which is the longest shot by far. And, uh, uh, but the thing that, that is important is the, the way we... And this is something that I, I, I owe it to another teacher. I had Dick Smith, 
was a makeup effects Oscar winner. He had done Godfather, he had done Amadeus, he had done uh, Altered States, The Exorcist, and he was my makeup teacher. And before any of this happened, before any of this formalized, I, I studied with him makeup effects, mold making, painting, all the technical stuff that was passed to Rigo and then from Rigo to everyone, how to make the molds, what materials I needed to do. I had to translate all the materials to what was available in Mexico. Because he would say, oh yeah, in America is very efficient. You know, call this company in Portland and they'll send it. In Mexico, you have to go to a place that makes shoes and you have to find a rubber that they used to make shoes. And from then on, Rigo knew where to buy all this. But he was the most generous man in the world. Listen, this guy is the uh, uh, second Oscar winner in makeup history. And he, I wrote him and I said, I'm a guy from Mexico. I, I want to do a movie called Kronos. Nobody can do the effects. I'm the only guy doing effects here. And if you don't teach me, I cannot make the effects in my movie. And he wrote me personally back. And he taught me, and he picked me up at the station in New York. He took me to lunch. I, he, and he did this with hundreds of people. Hundreds and ha J. J. Abrams, whom I met almost 30 something years ago, was his uh, student. I said, oh, JJ, why don't you meet Guillermo? And he introduced me to Rick Baker, to Rob Bottin, to everybody. And this is my model in life. I say, I'm here to help people connect with each other. And Guadalajara by itself wouldn't work. You, we have to make Guadalajara, Portland, and England be a single entity. And for them to think like international citizens of the world, like we belong to the world. We're not alone. So uh, the idea was the, the taller, the chucho, was co-designed with the guys from Shadow Machine. They, uh, they came in, they told us how to do this, how to build that, and you feel a kinship. And this is the main thing we can say to you. And this is what Annecy is great. You are not alone in whatever country you're in. You're part of a community of freaks that is fantastic. <laughs> So take advantage of that. This is your family. This is your classroom. This is your world. Take advantage of it. And I would like to talk also a little bit about animation. How do you see it now in Mexico and Latin America? What, what are your perspectives? Because every one of you guys, as a creators, you guys have projects that are building. And as we were talking about, it's a very collaborative work, and we've been working together to, to get each of these projects made. And I want to see your perspective on how do you see animation in Mexico and Latin America now, with all the studios that are working, that are here, that are presenting their projects, their films. I would like to see your perspective on that. Uh, who wants to start, René? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I think we, have, we are living a great time now. Uh, Pinocchio is showing that stop motion is still alive, and it is great. And that, that People really appreciate all the love and passion in every frame. And this is amazing. I mean, with a lot of computers and you know, artificial intelligence, there's still a, a, a chance to, to do uh, handmade uh, films. And it, it is great. Uh, now we have this beautiful, great space to, to, to do a stop motion at the best level in Guadalajara, and that's amazing. Thank you. What, what do you think, Sophie? Uh, how do you see the perspective with the features that you're pulling and, and starting to work on? I think it's blooming. I think animation is blooming. Um, I've been in Argentina in December, and I was so amazed by the beautiful things that are happening in South America. Not only in Argentina, of course, but in Chile, Argentina. It's just, it's just like, like crazy, and I'm, I'm really happy because uh, you know, like uh, our parents probably thought that we they have to to do something really like like it serious because it was a serious world, and I, I now I feel that the young people had the opportunity to do something that that 
passionate and, and love them and, and love. So it's, it is a great time to, to say I, I want to be an animator. <laughs> um, I mean, in our, uh, my parents didn't know when I told them I'm, I'm going to do animation, I'm going to study, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the film school. That is crazy because I, I don't know, seven years after what you said, there was a film school in Guadalajara. So I, I, I was like, can I, I'm able to study cinema in Guadalajara. And oh my God, it's just like crazy to understand what's been happening this, this I don't know, at, at 25 years. It's just, thank you, Guillermo. <laughs> it's just crazy. So, no, the, the, the thing that is funny is we, uh, Leon went to, uh, to McKinnon and Saunders, and when they were doing the, the rib cages of the rabbits, he said, why don't we make them in metal? Which is, of course, a, a, a jeweler solution that, very Mexican. Why don't we do it? Like when we were doing Kronos, uh, we created a machine that was made of gold by an alchemist in Mexico in 1600s, and we said uh, we were looking at plastics that we could uh, uh, use gold uh, to uh, do electrolysis. And then we said, why don't we make them in silver and gold? Yeah, and we made them, we made 13 machines in silver and gold with real jewelers. We have solutions in Mexico that are, go back to really old craftsmanship. And that is what we, we, everybody that comes from a third world country has something to give to the world that the first world cannot even imagine. Because we have solutions and creativity that comes from a different place. So we do it. And, and, uh, and I think it's very important uh, to know that, that uh, Latin America is in a great moment of creativity for animation because we don't give a fuck. <laughs> we're, gonna get, we're gonna get it made no matter what. And we don't, we don't care if there's no money, we don't care if there's no chance, we don't care if it's no future, we're gonna fucking make it. And the thing with animation is this, if you come to NSC, animation has never been more alive, but we're still being kept at the fucking children's table at an industrial level, meaning the industry of animation wants you to do a fucking movie about a skateboarding dog yeah. and, and for kids. And they want you to do a commercial about dancing yogurts, and, and, and it's horrible. So we have to fight to change it. We have to take over the fucking asylum and run it. So this is the chance. This is the chance. This should be the generation to do it. And I think that's what's really interesting to see all the stories that come from our regions that are so rich. And that's, that's what I've been talking about, that we have that now the opportunity not just only to have the stories, but to have the places where they can be made in a very uh, dignified way. And I think that also the, the contribution that we had with Pinocchio helped us also to step up our game in the production level. You know, that, that the time, the things that have to be done, and that, I think that that's also an experience that we take, but I think we give more with the stories, with the, the, the you know, the, uh, the uh, identity that each region has in Latin America, which is very strong. And in this case, I wanted to touch, Rita, uh, on your stories, what you have to say, what your experiences now at Annecy with UMO and how you feel with this. Okay. <laughs> Nunca ha sido, yo, yo prefiero estar detrás de, de las camaritas y She no frente a ellas. <laughs> eh, bueno, a, a, a venir y quedar en selección humo aquí en Anesí para mí es ya un, un gran este, paso, es para mí realmente significativo y este, pues es… Es difícil eh, levantar un proyecto en México, aún a pesar este, de que este, he tenido los recursos del IMCINE. Los proyectos en animación, tú sabes, suelen ser más elevados los presupuestos de lo que, de lo que puede apoyar, este, de lo que podrían apoyarnos. Déjame, espérame. 
Okay, she says uh, she prefers to be behind the camera, but you know, to be here with her uh, film Umo as a part of the official selection is already a dream. You know, to make films in Mexico, you need the support of the Mexican Institute of Film, and they are not used to not only the budget, but the technical calendar and the way of making animation. It's very difficult to get those things made. Y bueno, me siento muy contenta de, de estar aquí y que um, allá, ayer en el Bonlieu estuvo la presentación hermosísima. La gente te recibe con un cariño y un respeto al director que, que realmente te llevan a las lágrimas. ¿eh? El, el, el cariño que es ver a los creativos, a los productores y ver cómo respetan el trabajo de la animación es muy diferente que cualquier otro festival. So, well, you understood. Yeah. Fuck it. Sacre bleu. Well, I'll translate for those that don't know what the fuck you're applauding about. Uh, is, is, uh, she says that it's great to see it received in Banlieu, not only by the audience, but the fact that it's creatives, producers, and they dignify and give the respect to the medium and the director that is impossible to get in any other festival in the world. So... Now, if I may, uh, there, there are people that are not here on, on stage. Uh, and, you know, um, there is Carla and Luis, who are also great animators. They stay in Guadalajara. You know, uh, Juan Jose is also an, an amazing animator. Everybody has started alone, and then they pair up, or they, you know, it's like the Beatles. They break up, they come together, they break up again. But it, it's basically the band of uh, seven people there's people in all of Mexico, in Guanajuato, in Monterrey, in Mexico City, Cinema Fantasma, and I think that it's important in, in our country, and this came from Dick Smith. Normally, what you did if you knew something, they didn't share it with anyone. You kept it as a secret. You wanted to be the only one making it, and Dick Smith was not like that. He said, I know makeup effects, I'm going to teach you all make makeup effects. He created Rick Vega, so we did the same. I teach everything I know, everything I can do for others, and so do we all in the group. And uh, Estrella, you know, uh, and Raul Padilla, who are not here, I mean, or maybe they're here, but not here on the stage, they uh, were fundamental in creating this workshop. You know, Raul was a politician in Guadalajara that believed in the future. And the hardest thing in Latin America is to believe in the future. Because most politicians do not care about the future. They care about the now and what they can get out of the country. And he wanted to create the future. You know, and Estrella Araiza, who is the head of the film festival, was fundamental in creating the Taller del Chucho. And these people, and Daniel Varela, who is not here, you know, and uh, has fun been fundamental. It's important to know these things. If you have it, share it. If you have it, share what, what Leon said. The politic is, oh, I'm going to go there and they're not going to teach me because it's their secrets. Fuck that. Teach it. Share it. Give it. Because I think if you love animation, if you don't just love yourself, if you love animation, you want animation to survive. This is an art form stop motion uh, that has stayed the same, basically, for a hundred years. We are a bunch of crazy fuckers that are keeping an ancient form of magic alive. Pass it on and share it. And one thing I did all of my life since I was a kid, I said, there's no division between Mexico City and Guadalajara. Because traditionally it was like, oh, fuck them and fuck them. And, and I said, we, we should join. And I support as much these guys as I support Cinema Fantasma, as I would support anyone doing animation in a part of Mexico. And it's important that we do that. Yeah, and that's also one of the things that I wanted to touch on is like moving forward, no? moving forward to the other next generations. And I think that all of them have done a great job of doing just that. And that's why also in the Taller we started the workshops for the younger uh, uh, artists that wanted to be a part of this movement and wanted to, to do it. And we have to create this network. How many people are 
Uh, right now, well, we've done uh, about uh, 50 workshops right now. Uh, we started last year. Uh, we started one, once we finished Pinocchio. And now we've done 50 workshops. We've touched about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 500 people. We have people working with us. I, 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 and I, that's what I really like. For example, we had this girl that she was with us giving Servicio Social. And she used to take pictures for us, you know, just like for social media and stuff. And one day she said, Oye, uh, hey, Angelica, can I take the stop motion um, uh, courses? And I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead, go for it. And she found her passion there, and she really loved it. And now she was working on a short film with Cecilia Andalon in, 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 um, in Dolores. And that's the thing that carries on. And that's what, when you give uh, young, younger generations a chance, and then they see that you can do stuff, right? So that's very cool. So, so touching on that, I want to ask you, well, how do you see the future of animation in general and in, in Mexico, but in general, right? like what, how do you see, what, is, what do you foresee in the future for, for this art form? Uh, well, uh, just like Guillermo said about uh, uh, teaching the next generation, it is very important because in stop motion, uh, if you see it worldwide, we're not as uh, many as, as you think, we're just a few. And that's why you, in, in the feature films, in the stop motion feature films, you always say, see the same names. And uh, it is very important to pass the, know the knowledge, just like I, I experienced in, in McKinnon and Saunders, and I saw it in Pinocchio. Um, we got uh, these kids working in, the, in each department. Uh, I met there a young artist that, that are here. Yeah. Right there is one. And, yeah, and they are very talented. Get, get up if you are here, get up. Uh, even if Lu, it's one or two, come Lu, on. Lu. Lupita. Lu, Lu, Lupita, andale. Andale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, not to blow my own horn, but uh, what? Toot your own horn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had, I, had it, uh, I had it easier than this guy. Actually, she was my teacher, my mentor. And uh, just like Rigo was her mentor. And uh, I, I mentored these uh, young kids. And I passed what took me years to learn. They learned in a few months. Yeah. And now all of them, all these young uh, kids that worked uh, in Pinocchio are uh, thinking about making their own short films. And uh, this is really important because everyone, uh, every one of us uh, want to, uh, has the ambition, have the ambition to make a feature film someday. Yeah. And we need people to make those, those, those feature films. We can do it uh, all our, by ourselves. So that's really important and it's very encouraging to see this, these kids that uh, start to fly uh, from the nest. Yeah. And uh, yeah. That's very but positive. there's also important to tell everyone that likes stop motion is the, uh, of all the animation forms, is the one you can do alone in your room. Like, you don't need big machines, you don't need big processing farms, you don't need technology, you don't need apps, you don't need a crew. If you want to say fuck you to the world through a stop motion film, you can do it on yourself. You can do it on your own. So it's an incredibly important art form to preserve because it can be so intimate and so con an answer to the world and say, this is my pain or this is my circumstance, you can immediately do it. With, a, with an iPhone, one app and a puppet and a couple of crappy lights, you can make these things come alive. So this is very important. You can compete with anyone in the world with no resources. You cannot compete with Pixar or DreamWorks or, uh, in rendering and in sims and effects. Or, no, but you can with this. So this is why it's so great to see Chilean animation is kicking ass, Argentinian animation is kicking ass. This is really vital for the art form. And that's the future because the future uh, should be in the hands of the people that, that can express that. Rene, what about you? How do you envision the future of animation? 
Um, well, I think it is a great opportunity, really, to express yourself. We need, I mean, we have, some of us have this necessity to really just make something, to, to say something. And the process is absolutely amazing. Like, uh, I, I really enjoy all the process, the idea, the design of the characters, animation, and then sharing. And this is great. The first time I came here to Annecy, I, th I say to myself, this is my tribe. These are like me. We all share this absolute passion to, to tell something, to say something. And animation, I think, is a great opportunity. I'm always pushing, uh, trying to, to, to expand this, this, this love for, for handmade uh, work. Yeah. We like to say that we, we want to uh, este, envenenarlos, así como, like, uh, yeah, how do you say? Uh, poison, poison them with, with this passion, right? So, yeah. so sorry? Poison. Po <laughs> ah, yes. That's, the, uh, yes. Can, can, is that your kid? Yes. Can you get up? Chiri. Chiri. Que te pare, Chiri. Saluda a todos. He loves yes. animation. Dante was the voice of Umo. <laughs> yeah, and, and he's the voice of her short, Umo. Bravo. Yes. Uh, yes. You can sit now. <laughs> yeah. right, well, just to wrap it up a little bit more, I just wanted to give each of you the opportunity to, what would you like to say to this young, uh, to, to this group of young people and like their passion, how, what is the advice that you would give them, each of you? Please, Sophie, yes, start. Okay. That was not in the, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in the script. Okay, I'm a little bit kamikaze, so I'm going to say some strange things, but not that strange, I mean, we are all animators, so it's okay. Um, when I didn't have money, and I didn't have support, what I, what I, usually used to say was like, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. So my parents used to like, okay, <laughs> how, many, how many do you need or something? Uh, well, now, anyway, I, I, I will say just do kamikaze because if you do that, then you can learn things. Uh, probably everything is going to be bad, but you're going, you have like, you already know so many things that you are going to apply to the ne for the next uh, work, and then you grow up. Uh, if, you if you just wait too much, the passion is going to, you know, you're going to do other stuff, so you're going to distract. So if you want to make something, to say something, just, just go for it. And it's not going to be like perfect, but you can, you have learned so much that you're going to apply that in the next. And then in the next, you're going to say, okay, I'll do this, uh, I'll learn that from the other, so I'm going to put it into another story. And then you just go there, and then you're going to get better, because animation is just about doing, 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 and learning about doing, and okay, it's not perfect, but then the other one is going to get better, and I don't know, just, just do it, because um, there's also, this uh, great opportunity to, to, to know yourself, uh, to understand yourself, to, to, I don't know, just to continue uh, learning, getting better, and then, um, yes, I, I think that's, I'm going to stay, to, to stop there. <laughs> just do it, God okay, damn it. Kamikaze, kamikaze. <laughs> right. Well, we only live once. So really, really try to see it that way. We can make this like a fun park and have a good time. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I would say that, uh, well, Don't I am- in England. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a Generation X guy and I will sound like a boomer, but uh, what I would say is uh, that you young people that are thinking about animation should arm with patience. Uh, right now, it is, it is very easy to get things quick, and uh, animation is a very long process. But uh, if you have, like, like all of them said, uh, a story you, you need to tell, arm yourself with patience, and it is totally worth it. Uh, what I learned, 
uh, with her when she was mentoring me was that I, I thought animation was Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck, and that was it. And uh, when I learned that uh, Svan Meyer existed, it was, I was blown away. You can tell very complex stories, and uh, there's no limit. So yeah, uh, just push forward. It's, it's, uh, the, the result is always satisfactory. Yeah. <laughs> Hablando con que está diciendo León de que el tiempo que implica hacer una animación es tan largo, me recordé a Rigo cuando decía, hacer animación es como ver crecer el pasto lento. Sí. <laughs> he, he, she says, just listening to this and knowing how long it takes to do one animation film, and she remembers Rigo uh, Mora saying, uh, making animation is like watching grass grow really, really slow. <laughs> Y, y bueno, se trata de eso, de tener pasión y creer en levantarte la mañana y descubrir que lo que quieres hacer, preparas tu café y, de, y resolver cada plano. Esa es la verdadera, no son los premios, no son las pasarelas, no son los likes. En realidad lo que te, te despiertas cada mañana dices… <laughs> so she says the real joy of animation, the real beauty of animation is to wake up in the morning, make your coffee and figure out how you're going to solve this little piece of storytelling, this shot. And it's not about the awards, it's not about likes, you know, it's not about the festival uh, glamour, it's not about any of that, but about problem solving, just a little bit of storytelling at a time. Y eso es una pequeña pieza de un ran rompecabezas que desmembras y vuelves a armar y descubres que la historia se va escribiendo de alguna manera sola, porque el intercambio de estas piezas puede llegar a, algún, a llegar a un sentido mucho más interesante, no quedarte siempre con, con lo que ya habías planeado hace un tiempo, sino que tiene que evolucionar y evolucionas con él. Okay. She says that it's, to solve this puzzle is to actually uh, letting that puzzle tell you what it wants to be. That is not just born out of the idea you had, that it talks to you back and it shapes itself back. As you solve every little piece of problem, it tells you what the story you need to tell is. And it doesn't stay in one shape, it changes. It's the way. That's it, mother <laughs> <laughs> well, And... Uh, I will say this, I think that, the, that I have now been blessed with uh, 30 years career. I've been uh, doing things for film for more than 40 years. You know, I, I, 45 years I've dedicated my life to create things that stay. Uh, a film festival, a scholarship here, a, scho a group there, solving problems over there. If you do that, if you do that, the one thing that is really, really beautiful is to think not about yourself, but about the medium you were blessed to be born in. With the problems are the solutions. The obstacle is the road. You were put there where there is no road to create one. You were not born in a disadvantage. You were born in a circumstance. And you can change the circumstance if you don't think about it as a disadvantage. The voice you get comes from your pain and your lackings and, what, and the rage you have to talk to the world and say, you don't have to be this way. We can make you this other way. So you have to see your craft and your circumstance like that. And I think this is very important because no one, no one changes the world by accepting the role of a victim. You have to take the role of a maker. You have to understand that everything you were cursed with, you were blessed with. And you have to take that and change the circumstance because the highest thing you can do as a human being is making sure that the next person that comes along has a different world to face. And that's it.
Well, just to close the talk, I want to say uh, thank you, Guillermo. Thank you for because he really has done a lot for our community, not only in Guadalajara, not only in Mexico. I think in animation in general, talking about how uh, animation is is a, a way of telling stories, right? So, and, and I think that, uh, well, I just want to say thank you very much for everything that you do for, for us. And also it's important Salud. <laughs> to say we are a community and we will work uh, hand in hand to make everything uh, be better and to grow. So thank you very much. Bravo. Gracias. And thank you all. Thank of you. Me. Goodbye, Cleveland. Good night. <laughs>